Good afternoon, Namaskar. I, Kriti Vadera, would like to welcome all the teachers, learners, educators, students to CIET and CRT's live phone-in program. And you are watching us live on PME Vidya's channel number 12. This session is going to be for standard 12 students. Geography is the subject which we will be discussing in next one hour. And there's very interesting title which is written in front of my eyes, Exploring Stories Through Geospatial Technologies. Uh, and uh, with us, we have uh, Professor Aparna Pandey from Department of Education and Social Sciences, NCRT. I welcome you, Professor Pandey. Thank you. A very interesting topic and we will be discussing further in the next one hour. But before that, I would like to remind all the viewers here that if you have any queries, any questions or suggestions, then please do let us know. You can dial on our toll-free numbers. Number would be double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. And to watch the live streaming of this program, kindly log into our official YouTube channel NCRT official and there also in the live chat box you can send all your suggestions and questions. Certainly I will be taking up all of the, them in the last segment of the program and our expert will be reverting back on the same. There is one more medium through which you can contact us. Please mail your suggestions and questions to dth.class12 at the rate ciet.nic.in. So let's hear from our guest today, uh, exploring stories through geospatial technologies. W what is this all about, um, Professor Pandey? Very interesting to know. Yes, uh, this is uh, regarding geospatial technologies. Uh, students at uh, higher secondary stage study about geospatial technologies. Actually, uh, remote sensing, you might have heard about remote sensing. Yes, I have. Uh, uh, ISRO launches satellites, yeah. uh, remote sensing satellites in the space. So, these remote sensing, geographical information system and global positioning system. Together, all these technologies are called geospatial technologies. So, in class 11th, a student study about geos uh, remote sensing. Uh, in practical work in geography for class 11th in this textbook. I would like to show this uh, textbook. Uh, yes, this is the textbook practical work in geography for class 11th. Okay. Uh, in this book, there is one chapter on remote sensing. So, they study about remote sensing and then in class 12th, they study about geographical information system. This is the textbook, Practical Work in Geography, Part 2, and in this, one chapter is on special technologies. So, these technologies, they study about these technologies in geography in detail. And how to use these technologies, how to understand the concepts related to geography, yeah. or the concepts related to geospatial technologies. For that, we have also developed portal, School Bhuvan NCERT portal and uh, I had organized several programs which were based on school bhuvan and CRT and when if a students want to see all these programs which are uploaded uh, on NCRT's website or NCRT official YouTube channel they can see all these portals so okay. yes this is the portal which you can see on the screen and this it's is an initiative by NCRT yes NCRT and ISRO National okay. Remote Sensing ISRO okay. together we have developed this is a customized portal especially for school students and teachers. Right. Through this portal, they can learn about geospatial technologies. Uh, one so, in a way, Professor Pandey, it is learning beyond textbook, would you yes, say? Yes, very true, very true. This is learning beyond textbooks because we are encouraging students to go beyond the textbooks, Absolutely. go to field and geography is a field based study right. because uh, without understanding uh, local and environment or it is a saying in geography that if you want to become a geographer, you will have to make your souls dirty. If you want to study geography, if you want to become a geographer. So, now we are virtual uh, world ki because it's not possible to uh, visit uh, very distant places or in this pandemic era. So, all these problems are there. So, it is uh, better if you students use these virtual tours or they are Indeed. using yeah. uh, remote sensing satellites or digital globes to visit 
nearby areas or distant areas. If you could please tell our viewers how to explore this particular website. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is a school bhuvan NCRT portal. If they will yeah. write a school bhuvan NCRT on Google or in any search engine, this, home, this is a home page. And on this home page, they can see different thematic maps are uploaded. And uh, all these things, I will not go in detail because they can see, they can explore on their own. And several uh, programs were organized which were based on school born NCRT portal. What I would like to show here that here it is written e-learning course in remote sensing and geospatial technologies to mo know more click here. So if they will click here it another website will open this is Indian Institute of Remote Sensing Dehradun this is also a constituent unit of ISRO and here one course has been developed especially for students who are uh, or uh, schools who have adopted NCERT textbooks. Okay. So it is written NCERT courses. When you will click here, these are two courses. One is, uh, one is based on remote sensing and another one is on geographical information system. So when you will click on this remote sensing course, here this is the remote sensing, this is very interactive course. and or whatever topics, subtopics are given in the textbooks, you will find here. And you, when you, you will have to click here, I think voice will come. Uh, this is a course and here Minu is written. Uh, this is a course here Meno is written when you will click on Meno, then all these subtopics are there. You can click, it is not necessary that you will have to see from the first slide, you can go to any slide like it is written resolution because sometimes students get confused to understand resolution, different types of resolution. So we can click on re resolution and directly the concept related to resolution will come before you. If voice is uh, available, then they can hear the voice also. It is in very simple language and when this course was developed, it was reviewed by NCERT and whatever suggestions were given by NCERT uh, during the meeting, it has been incorporated in this course. So, one, it is mentioned that one girl is asking about remote sensing and one scientist and his family mem her family members are explaining about it. And uh, its definition, its concepts, all these things are there. Uh, assessment has also been integrated with this. If they want to assess uh, that how much they have understood, they can uh, self-assessment facility is also here. Next here, next and previous tab buttons are also there. It has been through image uh, uh, resolution has been explained. Then questions are there which you can see. Then again you can go to menu and you can see assessment. Only one tab is for assessment. Click on assessment and it will show you. Questions are there and analysis based questions are there. Begin, click on begin. The fire truck challenge, instructions are there, the students have to uh, read instruction and accordingly they have to do activities. Uh, why I am just showing all these things because the students will have to explore on their own start this and then when you will uh, click on any option see whether it is correct or not then continue good work that means it was correct then continue then click on this then see whether it is correct or not again it was correct and then you can continue so, th several questions are there, you can check your understanding through these questions. It is audible, 
so it can be used by uh, with the help of some uh, teacher or students visually impaired students can also use this because aud its audio uh, are also embedded with this slides then continue several questions are there different types of scanners all this whatever content is given in the textbooks about each and every topic has been explained through visuals through activities through sketches so this is very good uh, e learning resource which are based on remote sensing and geographical information system this was the last one then we can go to previous slides we can see the summary also summary whatever course has been described summary of this course has also been given here so before doing any activity first we must know about the contents what are contents and how it should, when contents will be clear understanding will be clear concepts are clear then only student can use that technologies right in real life situation so this is about remote sensing i would like to show you uh, gis also this is the course on gis audio is also embedded with this this course geographical information system click on this start and then again menu is there and you can add introduction learning objectives forms of geographical information advantages of gis all these things are given check your knowledge that means assessments self assessment facilities also there you can see whether you have understood or not and you can see again and again this is free of cost for that you don't have to uh, pay any fee uh, advantages of gis if you click on this this is opening i hope you might be able to see this screen and uh, audio is there you can hear also on your screen on your laptop check your knowledge assessment is also there facility of assessment digital evaluation but something more is also uh, given because if you want to learn something more about digital elevation model or tabular data non spatial data all these things are given in detail with the help of examples these have been explained so this uh, i wanted to explain through this portal that first of all you will have to go to school bhuvan ncert and there on the home page here where e learning courses about it is mentioned e learning courses in remote sensing and geo, uh, geo special technologies you will have to click here and go to another website and then ncer course based on ncert syllabus has been given in detail okay yeah this is about right uh, uh, geo special uh, technologies right. and uh, uh, e contents which have been developed for students and teachers okay. so it's it's quite essential to know like for 12th graders yes to get used to such technologies which are being you know developed by yes. for the curriculum or what yes. do you say and this, this is the most advanced technologies nowadays you might be uh, using gps in your car when you yes. go home or for anything you search your track or your uh, any if route or if you want to food, food, food are, for anything anything huh? right uh, if you want to book cab Huh? Because it uh, reaches at the exit point wherever right. you call. So how it happens? Because uh, how is it possible? Have you thought of? Uh, have you thought about it? How is it so possible that uh, uh, this uh, taxi reaches at the same point again? You want to change the I'm point looking. location? It reaches an another point. Yeah. Uh, so how is it possible? So this is this GPS which we are using in our uh, mobiles or or in system. 
actually this is geospatial technology this okay. is called geospatial technology behind this screen you, whatever you what you see that only roads are there or location of restaurants or yeah. shops or bookshops or the, names yeah. or all these things are there or petrol pump whatever yeah. uh, public utility services are available right in the area or uh, in, in the world you can locate and very uh, on your screen to tell, uh, just ask you that uh, it has various options it has a satellite view also it has the normal view also the 2d view the 3d views so many views as well yes so how is it actually this is the, that is called geospatial technology and about that technology i am talking about today okay uh, when you are saying satellite image, when you, you can see satellite image also, so the source of data is satellite image. On this satellite image, all these roads and uh, location, the actual, uh, yes, actual, actual, actual image of image the image earth appears, yeah. appears before you because uh, earlier we used to make map on plain paper on pa or on uh, uh, cloth or ground or any on any but flat they were surface all manual mediums right? manual mediums but today in this digital era we have in this digital, digital era this is a computer gis is a computer based system and remote sensing whatever these uh, developed countries including india india is also uh, uh, is one of the uh, countries in the world which has launched several satellites in the space and Indeed. for different purposes right. we are getting information what this program is going on because why because of this satellite communication absolutely because we are, we this are, is possible we are live uh, we are live and we are and communicating we are yeah. yes because our we, are, we people can see our faces we can showing we are showying all these images Textbooks, photographs everything. everything because why is it how is it possible because through of the, through satellite this is called satellite communication right. so some satellites are for communication purposes some uh, satellites are for resource purposes they are collecting information regarding different types of resources some such and agricultural production for agri soils minerals water availability all these several types of resources are available on the earth and these satellites are helping us to collect information and this data which we are using in GPS system in our mobiles this is actually this is a satellite images and right. we are using these satellite images in our mobiles and on mobiles when we are you making uh, different types of vector data or uh, roads or railways or uh, different routes or locations houses settlements this and analyzing uh, GIS is a factor then when we are just uh, retrieving data, tabulating data, manipulating data, analyzing data. This is used for different problem solving uh, purposes, for modeling purposes and GPS gives the location. Right. In uh, common language we are just uh, say that this is GPS we are using, but this is not GPS, this is a geographical information system which we are using in our mobile because it is a combination of remote sensing imagery, it is a combination of GIS, it is a combination of GPS, GPS is giving us location. And one thing I would like to tell you that GPS is a global, its full form is global positioning system. This system, the whole system is called global navigation satellite system. GPS is also a satellite based system right. and uh, this which we are uh, using this is an American satellite based system okay. and then this is that is why this system is called GPS. If uh, European countries have also launched their own satellites, other countries have also launched their own satellites. India has also um, launched but the, um, this is nowadays this is very powerful system GPS and uh, we are using this American satellite system that is why it is called global positioning system. Right. So, uh, I think that now it is clear that what is geospatial Absolutely. technology yeah. and how ge geospatial technology can be used for different purposes. The students can learn about it in detail uh, through this uh, e-contents and through this textbooks. Yeah. Uh, Professor Pandey, the title of today's program is Exploring Stories Through Geospatial Technologies. Yeah. You have very beautifully explained what this system basically is and how it is helping us, all of us in our day-to-day -day lives as well. But does it tell any sort of story? Yes. Uh, because, uh, why I uh, have uh, given this title that exploring stories through geospatial technologies. Uh, since very beginning, since childhood, we are listening different stories. 
or if stories are linked with any place space on the earth because just uh, just special technologies when we study about the earth right and when this incident happened in the past or during uh, recent times if it is related to the some location okay then we can explore it through this okay. technologies and here uh, what we have done we have just explored this dandi march through this that we have just uh, in history we have read that jindadi march uh, started from sabarmati ashram by mahatma gandhi in 1930 on 12th march and uh, he reached uh, dandi uh, on the coastal area and he made salt there and it was over and uh, on 6th of march 6th of april he made salt and uh, that's where he just broke the british government law all these things we have read that have you thought that from da sabarmati when he started his journey from which places he uh, passed through and where he stayed where he uh, uh, took rest during night so all these details we have collected from different sources yeah and then we try to uh, locate on satellite imageries so, so are we going to yes, do a time that, travel with yes, this time travel special technology yes special technologies okay. so that i would like to show you and uh, uh, yes please PPT, uh, remain I connected will, viewers because uh, we will be doing a time travel and uh, you can see that how history uh, and geography the, all the divisions of uh, social science are connected in a way and uh, professor pandey is beautifully explaining about geo special technology yes please yes so this is a dandi mart salt satyagraha this uh, uh, what we have developed here it is also uploaded on uh, school bhuvan ncert portal under help material this uh, um, file in pdf file uh, is uploaded so the uh, students or teachers can download this and they can learn how to develop similar kind of uh routes for different purposes yeah and uh, here is i would like to show this screen yes you can see dandi march salt satyagraha mm -hmm. mapping of dandi march on school bhuvan ncert geo portal i have used this school bhuvan ncert portal for mapping this dandi march you can see this in information about dandi march we have given that in 1930 gandhi ji declared that he would lead a march to break the salt law so all these details they can go through and then we can begin our journey right this is route of dandi march sabarmati ashram to dandi this map we have collected from sabarmati ashram in sabarmati ashram when you will visit you will see this map is there and we have taken this map from there and this is dandi march photograph also we have collected from different sources and all instructions are given how to develop this route on school bhuvan ncert portal it is developed uh, using explore level 3 Uh, and if, then yeah. here yes you wanted to say something no 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 i was just okay. having a look uh, this, i was just having a glance uh, this is uh, and here uh, we have uh, because whenever we develop anything for students we just give them instruction how to develop that project then they will it will be helpful for them here enter the name of a place this space is given they can show this so But, professor pandey now yes. you are showing our viewers that how to explore dandi march via bhuvan uh, post yes uh, yes through a screen itself you yes, are showing yes through it? a screen okay. through a screen So, because we have to start our journey from Sabarmati Ashram. Right. So, first students will have to locate Ahmedabad. Where is Ahmedabad? When we have, they have searched Ahmedabad, then they will have to find the Sabarmati Ashram. Then, if we find Sabarmati Ashram on the screen only, and this is Sabarmati Ashram, where River Sabarmati is written. This there. is River Sabarmati yeah. on the bank of River Sabarmati. Sabarmati Ashram. Sabarmati Ashram is there. Yeah. This photograph we have collected, which we have pasted here, and. Uh, when uh, i am showing this river sabarmati and sabarmati ashram yeah. when you will see this image something is 
something is uh, going to register in your mind that on which bank Sabarmati Ashram is located of Sabarmati River. River. Because when we say Sabarmati is located, uh, Sabarmati Ashram is located on, Sa in Sa um, on the bank of Sabarmati, if you are not explained it is on the left bank or right bank, it is not clear. So, there is no point. There is no point when you, will when you are just uh, observing this satellite imagery. So these minute details will also be given by uh, geospatial yes, technology. Yes, yes. And when we are just giving locating this area, its latitude, longitude is also there. Location, right. exact location is also there. So, students can see the location of Sabarmati Ashram where it is located. Yeah. Then, Sabarmati Ashram is situated on the bank of river Sabarmati because now they do not have to. Uh, then, on 12th March, this is the journey which we have started from here. That on 12th March, Gandhiji started Satyagraha March from Sabarmati Ashram, Ahmedabad at 6 30 am on foot with 80 followers. So, this all this information we have collected from either from textbooks or from authentic government sources. Right. So, these are the facts we are talking about. These are yes, because whenever we have to show any uh, historical facts, we need to uh, explore, uh, the explore the correct, the authentic, authentic sources. Authentic sources, right. Authentic Indeed. sources. So, we have our this uh, information is based on authentic sources, government sources. Uh, this the at point the portal then all these ins, uh, information is there because here they can give a uh, detail because point uh, is being used point uh, point line and polygon these are the um, uh, symbols which we use in geographical information system so if we are locating sabarmati ashram with the help of point we are using sabarmati ashram J. Right. Then we have used this. These were the places which were listed here on the map from Sabarmati Ashram to Dandi. Dandi. So, with this 16th March, because we have uh, we have uh, though we have used several slides here, yeah. but we have uh, uh, selected few points only yeah. uh, because otherwise there will be hundreds of flies, so, slides. So have so, you? I mean, uh, you started from 12th March. Now we have come to the 16th March. March. So in the, some uh, slots, we are trying to yes. deliver this complete yatra. Complete yatra, complete yatra. Okay. I will would like to show. That's why I have left few points. I am showing you that on 16th March he was okay. in Boriavi, and then we have found this Boriavi on the route. Here right. is Boriavi, and again you can see this. And then on 18th March he was in Napa. So when you are saying Napa or Napa, it is also called. You are seeing the settlements also. So. So this is the, the current situation, this is the present, present situation. The right. students can compare this situation with the earlier one. They can use different uh, maps which were used at that time during British period. They can use different data collection. They can collect data from census, from different sources that how many per, uh, the right. population was, uh, how much population was living at that time in Napa and what is the current scenario. All these things because GIS is being used for analysis purpose, not only for mapping and uh, collecting data, but analytical skills should be developed among students. So, uh, this is another Borsa, this is 18 March, again you can see this is 19th March. We have written few things also that night halt at Kanakpura, Mahatma Gandhi crossed the river Mahi early morning on 20th March 1930 and slept on its bank. bank. So, this is this is called this may also be called a historical geography because this is linked mm -hmm. with the earth, this is linked with geography and historical facts we are giving. Yeah. So, this is a part of historical and cultural geography and political geography you can uh, term it. So, all branches are interrelated yes. uh, in social science, in Professor social Pandey. science, in social science, and I, uh, I would like to tell you that a, stu a student must be knowing when they start their journey from Sabarmati, Mahi River will come if they are going to Dandi. So, all these geographical phenomena, geographical features will appear before them that if they, they are going from one place to another place, they should be very careful observer because observation is a skill in geography, it is very important when they are going from one place to another place by road or by railway or then they should 
very carefully they should observe that what type of feature, physical features are there, what type of vegetations they observe, what type of soils they are observing, what type of settlements they are observing, what type of crops are there, crops are drawn. So, all these things are very important to understand if you want to learn geography. geography. So, the, through this, through this Dandi March, students are also learning geography because they are going from Sabarmati Ashram to Dandi and they will have to cross because Gandhiji had to cross this Mahi River if they are going to use same route which Gandhiji used. Did, yeah. Then this is Kareli 21st March, 21st March in Gajera he reached, 22nd March Jambusar, see the situation now this is Jambusar is a big settlement area, it's a huge uh, uh, area and you can see this is a uh, road pattern and everything. You then 26th March in Bharoch, it is what Broch also it was called, it, now it is called Bharoch, Gandhiji crossed the river Narmada in a boat at Nava Chauki. That means, when they are going from Sabarmati to Dandi, they will have to cross two rivers. These are very important rivers, these are Mahi river, Narmada. another one is Narmada, Narmada river and in the, the history is also linked with that, that Gandhiji slept and he crossed the river in a boat at Nava Chauki. Then today, in 1930, 27th March, Gandhi was, Gandhiji was an Ankaleshwar. So, they can link it with, uh, this is uh, Ankaleshwar. How Ankaleshwar beautiful is it is, you, in social sciences all branches are interlinked first and history and present again on 27th March, yes. how beautifully you are explaining that today itself, today it's in 1930 uh, Gandhiji was in Ankaleshwar. Ankaleshwar, when he was uh, leading this march from this is very famous march, this Dandi Salt Satyagraha march. march on 27th March 1930, he was in Ankaleshwar. So, Ankaleshwar is known for which purpose, you know? It's no, very I famous. I, I really don't have any idea. So, of you will just this your is homework. The very first this term, uh, uh, I mean, as, as a. Uh, you will place. have to, this is your homework. Okay. I will. Even our viewers have to the Students search. might be knowing geography, students know. Ankleshwar. No, yes. even I petroleum. have studied the geography. Petroleum and for petroleum gas. Okay. Yes. This on 27th and 28th March, Sajod and Raima and all these, what when we, have, when we were developing this map, first what we did, we identified places. We just put point on these places and after that we linked these points with line feature. Okay. Then only you can draw any route. First, you will have to show location. First, you will have to mark all these places which were on the way, and then you will have to link all these places with line. So this was again Gandhiji had to cross another river. This is Tapi. So it's the on third first river. April. Yes, this is the third river. On first April 1930, Gandhiji crossed the river. After Tapi. Mahi, then Narmada, then, then it's Tapi. Yes. Now you have remember. So remember that uh, there are. When a person has to start his journey from uh, Sabarmati Ashram, he, will, he or she will have to cross three, three rivers. rivers and these are very major rivers, Mahi, then Narmada, Narmada then, Tapi. then Tapi. Tapi. And then one more uh, was, this is 2nd April, gradually we are coming to 6th April, 3rd and then Gandhiji crossed the river Medhola and arrived at Dhaman village. This is Another small rivulet, you can say. This is not a very major river, but this is a rivulet, but this is also very important. And this is the Gandhiji crossed this river and reached Dhaman. So on 6th April, Mahatma Gandhi bathed in sea and at 8:30 a.m. civilly broke law by picking up natural salt from shore in Dandi. So on 6th April, this is Dandi. When you will, when I am showing you this is Dandi, then it will form a mental image in your mind. And this mental mapping is very important in geography. Whenever you will see, when you frequently you will see, consult Atlas or world map or certain digital globe or any uh, uh, this uh, traditional globe, these mental images form. And these mental images help you to 
enhance your mental mapping skills. That is why we encourage students and teachers to use these maps and satellite imageries. Nowadays it is available and for all and digital globes or globe frequently in the classroom to enhance their mental mapping skills. And then all locations from Sabarmati Ashram to Dandi are now marked in School Bhuvan and CRT Geo Portal. And then they will have to join these with the help of line feature. Gradually we are using this line feature to join these points. And then at last you will be able to join all points and ultimately you will get this route which is shown here. This is the route from where this Sab Dandi to Sabarmati, Sabarmati to Dandi. Because when you will uh, discuss this story or any story in the classroom, if you are not using map, a student just listen, but they don't know. From Sabarmati, Gandhi ji started his journey uh, to the west or south or east or uh, right to which direction Gandhi ji went if you don't know the location of Dandi. So therefore, first of all, we need to know that where Ga if Gandhiji started his journey from Sabarmati, he went to which direction, where is Dandi and why he chose in this area and which route he followed and why did he uh, uh, choose this route. You can analyze these things. In all these, these factors and, and, and uh, not just about these geospatial technologies in a way a student uh, can you know explore all the possible geographical features of like the rivers the agriculture whatever you said on on this way itself we have yes. just seen uh, three major rivers were there three major rivers are there and uh, three major rivers and so many other things which we uh, we have not discussed, discussed here, here. the students can observe on their own they can find out okay this is my village my relatives live here they will be they get right. thrilled to understand okay this is the route and we we are uh, for nowadays we are using different route Indeed. So, and uh, uh, students also read about that, that at this time when Gandhiji uh, led this uh, march in 1930, uh, at the same time at different, in different parts of our country, similar kind of marches uh, were um, uh, they started yeah. Yeah. and by different people, like uh, where uh, this uh, salt was being made, like in uh, Andhra Pradesh in Guntur such march was organized. In Odisha, this march was organized in uh, uh, this uh, Katak and Puri and Balasor where this salt was being prepared, made. And then in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, in Tamil Nadu, Sri Rajagopalachari, he was a great leader and he had uh, organized this march, similar kind of march from Tiruchirappalli to this uh, another place on coastal area. Yeah. So all these places. So Professor Pandey, in a way, I'll say uh, like whatever you just discussed. So our 12th standard students can really explore these marches or some historical movements uh, via uh, geospatial technologies by making some projects. No, when when we I say that C. Rajagopalachari organized a march from Trichy or Tiruchirappalli to Veda Ramen, uh, Veda Ranayam uh, area. This is on coastal area. Uh, in uh, uh, history textbooks or history books or any government sources on a state or at different sources and different places, information about this route will be there. The okay. student can explore. On Malabar uh, Bar area also the such a similar kind of march was organized. So uh, students can discuss with te their teachers, uh, students can collect information from different sources, from internet sources, from magazines, from in books and then they can make such type of routes they can show not only for historical purpose like nowadays when ge we talk about geospatial technologies it is being used in all spheres nowadays right. and mostly in developed countries uh, uh, this is being used uh, like in US and uh, European countries or in all developed nations you will find that more and more uh, application of geospatial technologies in all areas. Uh, when we last year due to this COVID pandemic, 
migration took place yeah. in India, not only in India, in all parts of the world. In India, we saw that people were migrating from metro cities, from Delhi, from Mumbai, from Kolkata, from other places to their native places. Native places. In the world, also people were migrating from they were coming from US, from European countries to their, to their own, countries. own countries. Yeah. So such migration took place. And students can map this also. And is they it? can, yes, why not? How, how is it possible, Professor Pandey? Because all these, if, if they, uh, this, uh, on uh, School Bhuvan NCRT portal, when we say okay. that uh, this portal focuses on India, different centers are there um, kolkata is showing there kolkata and all metro cities they can all uh, they can see they can f collect information from uh, newspapers right because at that time so many information so many stories were there that how these people were suffering from different problems and they were coming from which area to which small villages and to which disheartening were stories were there so all these stories they can collect and show that maximum migration took place from which place to which place. But there is ample of sources in terms of digitally, I would say in terms of newspaper also. Yes. So what you're trying to say is that the students can collect this data, yes. the actual facts and after that the way you presented Dandi March, it can be presented that way? Yes, okay. very true. And mapping is the first step because okay. when we map anything, when we collect information and we are mapping, this is the first step. But this right. is very important step. The first we have to map this and then we will have to analyze why is it so? Why this area was chosen? Why this area was not chosen? Okay. Why migration took place from Delhi to another place? Why not? Uh, because metro cities, why people uh, come to metro cities for uh, employment? For earning, for, uh, for earning the, Yes. For so, or, yes. And for in which uh, type of work they are involved? R exactly. So all so these things they these can facts be have to be like analyzed. They analyze and they have to be yes. on paper first. Yes. You have to analyze the data. Then uh, further, further uh, probing questions or uh, right. all these analytical for that different types of data may be collected. But research is very important. Research is very important, and at class uh, uh, high secondary stage and especially in class twelfth, students learn how to collect data with the help of field visit during field visit or from newspaper clippings from internet sources how to use computers all these things we have given in geography in class 12th so these uh, students they study about it and they can apply this several themes are there in geography not only with the uh, migration urbanization settlements different types of settlements are there they can make a route map that in which area different types of settlements, why such type of huts are found here, which type of local available resources are being used in this area. So, stories may be formed, so stories may stories be explored. Are endless. Endless. <laughs> okay. We have Indeed. several themes, we have several themes which may be used to develop a story, but a story should be linked to the earth surface story should be if we are using a school bhuvan if you are using any other search engine if you are using any other web sources if you are using any other digital uh, globe which shows uh, whole earth whole globe then they can they can make international stories they can uh, story maps uh, but what i my i suggest that the stories should be actual real stories and they should be linked with the earth surface they should have specific location then only these technologies can be geospatial technologies can be can look used. realistic realistic yes. also in realistic also it should be realistic i know it yeah. should be realistic Please. and then uh, like uh, not only like floods different uh, india is uh, suffering from different types of hazards Climatic, natural hazards whether this is cyclones yeah. or floods or this is uh, landslides so, students can, why, why is to, if cyclone occurs and the coast on coastal areas in Odisha and uh, Andhra Pradesh or in Tamil Nadu, generally on the uh, eastern coastal areas uh, are affected by uh, cyclones, tropical cyclones, then they can track the route of the cyclones, IMD website is there. Okay. IMD website also gives all information about uh, cyclones, the dates and the speed of wind and warning also the issues to uh, and why warning the issue because they alert warning because of the these uh, fishermen 
they go for fishing so for them just to for um, evacuation plans they accordingly they uh, make evacuation plans for floods also flood warnings they issue and flood for cyclones uh, so uh, all these things so they, what the students will have to do they will have to collect information and then they can map these on school bhavan ncrt portal or any other digital globe if they want if such facility is available they can use and then they will have to analyze this information this is the skill this is the higher order thinking skill geographical thinking skill may be enhanced when they analyze this information and they come to the conclusion uh, uh, professor pandey your time must be a different time when you uh, like developed the interest towards geography uh it was all manual based when you used yes. to, even i have done enlargement of maps and making them small with inches and but yeah. in today's digital era our students are so good in you know using these gadgets and exploring bhuvan portal as well so as a geographer what would you say i mean this time of digital time is it helping geographers in a in a way yes very much but how these gadgets are being used uh this that is the big the question that makes all the difference because if we were, you are just using your mobile for gps purpose if you are going uh, are finding routes or you are finding any uh, public utility services sometimes you enlarge map sometimes two terms you use zoom in and zoom out yeah. do you know that these two these two facilities are totally uh, based on scale if you because the scale is one of the components in, in gps of maps. also we in gps also we enlarge, enlarge zoom in and zoom yes, out yeah. zoom in and zoom out okay. this is totally this concept of a scale may be linked with this zoom in and zoom out because it's totally it's a scale it is scale, if, if you want a teacher wants to teach about a scale in the classroom which we have given in class 6 with the help of this zoom in and zoom out uh, tabs or this activity this teacher can easily explain the concept of small scale, scale maps large scale maps so this the is base, the beauty of the, these the gadgets that yes and uh, we know that uh, teachers are handling uh, mobile to student and they can easily explain this in the classroom but i am not sure what whether they are using or students are using to learn this concept but one should from, yes a, one should because to, uh, uh, day in day out professor pandey we are using such apps which are showing us gps locations yes. so one should know how they are made how we have to use them in a correct way yes this is the big question and uh, uh, we right. want that uh, these gadgets should be used in a proper, proper manner proper manner um just last few minutes left for this session to be ended professor pandey i would request you to give some uh, give some sorts of tips to our viewers uh, that how they can explore uh, bhuvan portal in a easiest manner if you can just share some tips uh, yes uh, i can show them this uh, so on your screen viewers yes. you will be having again ncrt's bhuvan portal and our expert is trying to explain again with some tips uh and on your screen you can have NCERT's Bhuvan portal where uh, we discussed in last one hour how you can use and how you uh, can And for that uh, what I would suggest them that uh, I have organized If you just verbally Yes verbally I would like to tell yeah, them please. that the school bhuvan NCERT portal several programs were organized yeah. uh, from this studio only okay and uh, for teachers for uh, especially for teachers yeah. those who are uh, teaching geography at plus 2 level for them we had organized but it is available for all it is uh, teachers and uh, students both uh, they can use this uh, uh, programs and uh, two years back we had organized a program for five days du uh, duration and uh, um, this course step wise we have explained how to develop a map how to develop uh, how to collect connect data or with map like uh, how to develop excel table or how to link excel tab table with 
map data, how to export data or import data, all these things, whatever concepts are given in geography at plus 2 level, we have tried to explain through this programs. So, if they want to see, they can, uh, you, I think they can use this uh, PGT courses outreach program in um, uh, geospatial technologies. Okay. If they will write in NCRT, if they have to search these programs, they will have to write this outreach program in uh, geography for PGTs in geography. Okay. So, in a way, uh, in a way not they just will, students, but it is a help uh, to educators as well? Yes, sir? for all, uh, uh, not only for, uh, P at that time we had organized this for PGTs in geography because we had to give them certificates, so to those who have uh, attended or those who had submitted their projects, they got certificate also uh, and uh, uh, several, uh, more than 500 teachers they had attended this program and several other programs on Swayam Prabha also I had conducted several programs on uh, which were based on school bhuvan and crt portal so they can uh, watch these programs and learn how to use how to utilize how to uh, get registered with this uh, portal uh, under level 1 level 2 level 3 one thing i would like to tell uh, students and teachers both that uh, uh, teachers can also use this portal in the classroom and we have requested isro and that only one user id and password may be used by 50 students simultaneously okay. uh, because so that's also provision provision is okay. available okay. And because for class 6 to 10 8th if a students do not have their email id then teacher can use her or his email id and uh, user id and password for 50 students in the classroom so that's a very valuable information you just, just shared with our viewers it will be a help to the entire class yes. if a teacher is yes. making a yes to access the account. Yes. So that's really wonderful to know. Uh, Professor Pandey, the session was really inter uh, interesting, interactive. I really thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And viewers remain connected to PME with their NCRT's resource material is there for you. Thank you. Namaskar.